Uh, we are so thrilled to be able to partner with the U.S. Small Business Administration and to have special guests from the White House today to kick off what couldn't be a more important conversation around changes to the PPP. We know that small business owners are the backbones of our economy, our society, and we are so pleased to be able to work with the Biden-Harris administration to do anything we can to get information out to make sure that small business owners have the opportunity to build back better. As many of you know, President Biden recently announced changes to the PPP program, really focused at helping so many important uh, small business owners in our community. Many of those folks are our smallest uh, businesses as well as business owners of color. So we're pleased to be able to kick off today's conversation with a special focus, these conversations for everyone, but today really highlighting the importance of the AAPI community. Um, with that, it is my pleasure to uh, kick the conversation over to Shiling Tong. Um, or I'm sorry, to Poway Rivera, um, who is a senior advisor uh, in the Office of White House Public Engagement. So with that, Poway, over to you. Thanks so much, Red, and uh, it's good to be with you um, here today. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining this webinar and AAPI and, and also Native American business owners, representatives and community-based orgs and so many others. Uh, as uh, Red mentioned, my name is Poway Rivera and I have the honor of serving as our Director of Tribal Affairs and Senior Advisor to the White House Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. And I'm so thrilled to be with so many community leaders and small business owners. Uh, I'm from the Pueblo of Pauake, just north of Santa Fe, New Mexico, if any of you have ever been. Um, beautiful part of the, the uh, world, and I'd encourage anyone else to, to, to visit if you haven't already. Um, but throughout my career, I've been working for the inclusion of AAPI and Native American communities across the country and such. I have a, a good understanding and, uh, of the challenges and needs confronting our communities. The pandemic has hit small businesses across the country hard. We also know that the pandemic has hit businesses owned by communities of color and tribal communities even harder. I want you to know that the White House and the SBA is laser focused on addressing the inequities exposed by COVID-19 and working hand in hand to ensure that we do everything in our power equitably to support our small businesses with crucial relief funds, particularly with our historically underserved communities. In less than two weeks, around 11 million Americans will start to lose their unemployment benefits to no fault of their own. So before I hand it over, I wanna to quickly touch upon President Biden's historic $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, a plan that could change the course of the pandemic to build a bridge toward economic recovery. Among many provisions in the American Rescue Plan, it includes $160 billion to stand up a national vaccination program, $20 billion in emergency funding directly to tribal governments to combat the COVID-19 crisis, $15 billion in grants to hard-hit small businesses, $10 billion in investment in successful state, local, and tribal businesses, financing programs that help small businesses innovate, create and maintain jobs and provide the essential goods and services that communities depend on. $25 billion in grants for small restaurants that have lost substantial revenue. And it would devote an additional $1.25 billion in funding to support live venue operators, uh, theatrical producers, live performing arts organizations, uh, museum operators, motion picture theater operators, and talent representatives that are struggling to make ends meet. Finally, an additional $7.25 billion in funding for the Paycheck Protection Program. Our economy is at risk, and with so many people suffering right now, it's so imperative that we pass the American Rescue Plan. So with that, I just want to thank everyone for having me uh, join you and address you this morning or this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Shi Ling Tong, CEO and President of the National Asian Commerce and Entrepreneurship, who's going to talk about the important work that ACE does advocating for our community. Shiling? Always, thank you so much for your uh, remarks and also your significant work. It is so helpful for all the small business owners. Uh, my name is Shiling Tong, the president and CEO of the National Asian Pacific Islander American Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship. We also call National ACE. We represent 2.2 million Asian American Pacific Islander business owners who employ about 3.6 million people. National ACE works closely with over 65 affiliate AAPI uh, chambers and also partner across the country to ensure that our uh, AAPI businesses have the tools and resources 
they need. Uh, AAPIs are the one of the fastest growing groups of entrepreneurs in America and on average have a higher growth revenue when it comes to a uh, business ownership. But unfortunately, anti-Asian violence has been far too present and we need to work to ensure that there is an equitable access to tools and resources for business owners during this crisis and the future crisis. AAPIs continue to make invaluable contributions to communities across the country amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Like many business owners, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have faced tremendous challenge during this pandemic. Though uh, AAPI, uh, particular AAPI women, have a layoff employees at a high rates and face waves of anti-Asian violence since the start of the pandemic last year. In 2020, AAPI-owned business were the most negatively impact of all demographic groups with working business owners falling by 20% from February to December. National is so proud to have a collaborate with the SBA leadership and also your team members and the Public and Private Strategy Institute to host this very important conversation. We have reached a pivotal point in the pandemic. With more vaccines distributed every day and a COVID case loads decreasing in many states. During this time, I have seen a lot of kindness and briefness. Thank you all. Thank you all, our partners. Thank you for joining us webinar today. And uh, we really, really appreciate your effort, your dedication. That say, it is more important now than ever that we have an educate, adequate data on business owners and the entrepreneurs to have a better understanding of a pen points so that we can develop the best resources as we begin the long road to recover. Thank you. Thank you so much, Xi Ling. We really appreciate that. Without any further ado, I'm so excited to introduce Patrick Kelly, who is going to provide a quick overview of the rule changes to the PPP. Patrick? Great, Renee. Uh, thanks so much to everyone. Um, Thank you again for being on this webinar to learn about PPP. Uh, my office at the SBA is in charge of the pay pay Paycheck uh, Protection Program, and I'm excited to get a chance to tell you more about uh, how we're leveling the playing field uh, for the smallest businesses um, so they can get relief. Um, our goal uh, in the Biden and Mar uh, Harris administration is to help small businesses um, uh, uh, and communities across the country, put them back on the path to opportunity, enhance equity for every small business owner. Too many uh, small businesses are being left out of the recovery and the SBA uh, and the Biden-Harris administration is making it its our it top priority to course correct. First, uh, here's where we are right now. Um, since um, the president uh, took office, there are the share of funding going to small businesses with fewer than 10 employees is up 60%. The share of funding going to small businesses in rural areas is up nearly 30%. And the share of funding distributed um, by um, lending intermediaries uh, is up more than 40%. This is good progress, uh, but we know that uh, there's more to be done. And so that's why last week, uh, President Biden uh, made significant changes to the PPP to ensure that small businesses that need the help most uh, have access to it. Here's how we're doing that. So first, um, we are allowing sole proprietors, uh, independent contractors, and self-employed individuals to receive more financial support by revising the PPP's formula for these categories of applicants uh, to um, calculate by gross income. We're eliminating an exclusionary restriction on PPP access for small business owners with prior uh, non-fraud felony convictions consistent with bipartisan congressional proposal. We're eliminating uh, PPP access restrictions on small business owners who have struggled to make student loan payments by eliminating student loan debt delinquency 
as a disqualifier for participating in PPP. And we're ensuring access to non-citizen small business owners who are lawful U.S. residents by clarifying that they may use their individual tax payer identification number to apply for PPP. Um, and so uh, with that, um, I, I believe we are going to do some question and answer, um, Renee, is that right? That is correct. And uh, we want to thank you for, for that update of the changes to the PPP. Um, the first question uh, is, what if I receive funding during the first round, but it wasn't good enough for my business? Am I eligible for this round as well? Um, yes. So if you um, if you received funding during the first round, but it wasn't enough, um, you have it, and you've experienced a 25% reduction uh, in any over the similar uh, 2019 quarter, um, then you can apply through your lender uh, uh, or another lender uh, for um, a second draw. Um, so yes, you have access to funds. Great. If I'm an independent contractor and I'm confused about eligibility status, uh, what are the requirements? Um, I think this person is trying to ask about independent contractors for PPP loans, whether they're S Corp, C Corp, or LLC. Yeah, so ownership structure is a, uh, a highly technical, uh, very fact specific uh, type question. So, one of the things that I, I would recommend everybody on the call. Um, do if they have this question, and many do, um, there are directions on how to calculate your loan amount based on the type of business organization. Um, so as Renee mentioned, and that can be found on sba.gov. Uh, you can also go to the U.S. Treasury website, um, and it breaks out uh, corporations, sole proprietors, how it relates to independent contractor, and it's, it's a, a, a useful uh, tool to uh, help you with that. Great. Uh, the next question is, I received an idle loan and PPP first round. Am I still eligible for this round? And is there a maximum amount of money that I can take out? So um, you could be eligible, as I mentioned on the first question, for a second draw under those um, um, facts if you can demonstrate a 25% reduction um, from one quarter in 2020 versus a similar quarter in 2019. Um, and um, um, yeah, so, and then as far as um, there, the max, the max is based upon uh, your two and a half times payroll, similar, exactly the same way that it was calculated in the spring of 2020. Uh, but for example, one of the changes that we announced today for sole proprietors, uh, self-employed individuals and independent contractors, as many of you found out, it was very difficult to get um, a decent amount of money in the first draw because the calculation was based on net income. The calculation has now been changed to gross income. Um, and so therefore you could be eligible to for, for, for more dollars in your second draw than you were in your first draw. Awesome. There's a lot of great questions here. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows that uh, what we're doing is pulling questions that you ask, whether it was through, through your registration uh, for today's webinar or if you're putting it in the chat. Uh, we're not asking any specific uh, personal, uh, if you will, questions, but more so trying to phrase it in general terms uh, so that it can be applicable to more people. Um, so just an FYI, if you, you hear something like your question, uh, we just phrase it to be more general rather than the specific situation that you're in. Um, I'm seeing what are the terms for forgiveness? Um, it's a good question. So uh, forgiveness um, is, so it depends on your situation. So there are a number of different eligible uses, but the, the, the high level breakdown is as long as you use 60% of the proceeds for payroll and 40% for other eligible uses, which can include rent, utilities, and, and so forth, um, then you should be fully forgiven. Um, we at the SBA, since the Biden-Harris administration took office, have been releasing a weekly report dashboard on forgiveness. Over a third of the total outstanding uh, loans that were originated to date, there's about 5.2 million, 
have been forgiven um, and 99.9 uh, or 99.1% of those forgiveness applications received full forgiveness. Um, so, um, but uh, again, um, there are many different uh, third parties that you can also work with that can assist you with your forgiveness application. CPAs is the best, just like filing for taxes. Third party payroll providers, um, so there are a number of them. Um, they can assist in this. Um, so there's resources that you probably use in your business to file taxes or to do payroll um, that, you, that can assist you with the forgiveness application. And the intent, um, and this is really important to, to hear and know, um, is the intent is for you to be for this loan to be forgiven. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that that makes perfect sense. The goal is for forgiveness. Uh, so sure. yes, yeah, be mindful of that. And the onset is great. Um, we're getting a ton of questions about this, which is basically someone starting their company uh, in 2020 and they don't have receipts or some sort of uh, filing of taxes or what have you for 2019. Are they then still eligible for PPP right now? Um, you may be eligible um, only if your business was in operation before February 15th, 2020. Um, so uh, it, it, it depends on your situation. Right, so if you were January 6th, technically you would not be able to receive funds. Uh, so if you, yeah, correct. Is it well in 20? Yeah, that's right. Yep. For 2020. Got it. Okay. Um, will there be any extensions to the two week period since the rules aren't officially out yet? Yeah. So I uh, thank you. This is a great question. So I want to first clarify that the change, uh, the two week period that was created by President Biden last Monday was exclusive to uh, sole proprietors, self-employed individuals, independent contractors, small businesses with 20 or employees or less. But it does not mean that prior to that period, you could not apply. In fact, 91% of these uh, this rounds of PPP loans were to businesses with 20 or less employees. And March 10th through the remainder of the program period, March 31st, uh, you can continue to apply. So while the the Gross income rule was posted yesterday, went into effect yesterday. Uh, the forms were posted. The technology comes online tomorrow, Friday. There's a training for lenders at four o'clock today, for example. Um, you will have access to that and, and it will continue. What President Biden was prioritizing was to make sure that the smallest businesses had their own um, VIP entrance to the PPP for two weeks. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Um, Will there, oh, actually, we just looked at something like that. Sorry. Uh, what are the parameters around credit history? Um, there's someone or a few people, too, mentioning they had either a bankruptcy, um, bad credit, or undesirable credit. Uh, will this prevent them from obtaining a loan? So, unfortunately, bankruptcies will prevent you from being able to obtain a PPP loan. However, um, the other characterization of bad credit. Um, credit is, by definition, no offense to you small business, you, you probably all are experiencing worse credit because the pandemic has um, you know, uh, annihilated your top line sales. So, um, so as a result, this, the PPP is not um, a credit decision in the traditional sense. There's no credit scoring. Um, there's other than calculation for your payroll amount or your gross income amount, there's there's not underwriting traditionally way, the way that a bank would do it. So um, so it's intended for the fact that you are likely having problems uh, as a result of no fault of your own, but the pandemic. Yeah, that's hard for a lot of people out here, definitely. Um, Seeing some about immigration status and know that there were rule changes regarding uh, citizenship. Can you explain that a little further, what that means? Yeah, so um, it includes those that are not permanent with green cards. Um, it, it, it's the, for those that are here with um, uh, ITINs, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, under work visas. 
Um, it does not include um, those that are here illegally, um, but um, it does. It is more expansive uh, in those other categories. Are applications in other languages uh, available outside of English? Uh, yes, uh, um, they they are available. And are the new rules retroactive? Um, no, uh, for gross for so for gross income, unfortunately, um, they are not retroactive. Um, this is, however, something that um, Congress and the administration are aware of um, and working to try to address. Um, and because we understand that folks um, would like to have um, uh, go back to their first draw and, for example, process a loan increase. Um, under the new guidance. Um, and we are aware that some of you have received a first draw or a second draw um, and already had the funds dispersed. And so therefore you, you can't unring that bell. Um, I will say that for those that have an application in flight with their bank and were unaware of the gross income calculation, they can um, uh, request that their application be uh, rescinded or um, you know, put back um, to reapply, and the bank can now use the new gross income calculation. Um, and I, and when I say bank, by the way, I, I mean lenders. So some of some folks work with non-bank lenders, CDFIs, MDIs, credit unions, uh, non-bank lenders, fintech, where you can get access to PPP. All of the same, all of those um, uh, lending intermediaries are able to. Give you back your application if they have not um, obtained a loan authorization or uh, or dispersed the funds and you should be able to reapply under the new standard that's good to know uh, and then following up on that i'm seeing some questions about uh having issues with their bank uh they're not being allowed to complete an application is there someone to contact about this issue and where do you suggest they apply or go through for an application outside of their bank? Yeah, so um, th there's so it, it's hard to it's hard to be very specific about what type of issue um, because sometimes between um, uh, lender and borrower, there's uh, debates about things and and um, that are you know about facts, and then there's other things where a, a lender is not following the rules or something like that. So um, what I would say is um, there are, you can go to sba.gov. There are 68 district offices um, um, in, in all the states and territories across the country. Um, they have uh, uh, a specific designated person, a lender relationship specialist uh, that is responsible for the area uh, lenders. Now, obviously there are some lenders that you know, are everywhere. Uh, but um, if you feel that you're being treated unfairly, that's a good place to start. Um, and um, and if you feel you're being treated unfairly in a and in, in, in something that feels worse than just this is a bureaucratic process, um, you know, there is the Office of the Inspector General um, that you can access um, to file a complaint um, and and so forth. So there are different resources that you can seek from SBA.gov. Um, you know, to to um, address that. Thank you. Uh, how much money is left in the PPP program overall? Um, so it, it's it's a moving target, obviously. Um, uh, but there is plenty of there. There right now, the run rate. Um, of um, outstanding program dollars left versus the daily um, new originations on second draw and first draw would likely mean at this point that there will be plenty of room underneath that cap. Um, so um, obviously, you know, um, haste makes waste. So apply, you know, as quickly as you can. But, um, you know, we do believe that uh, most of uh, the folks that want a second draw or first draw will be able to obtain one with the current funding. Great. Um, I know you sort of touched on this, but mm -hmm. I'm seeing some more additional questions um, about people who applied for a PPP loan 
a few weeks ago uh, and were approved for a smaller amount. Uh, and under the new rules for Schedule C employees, particularly, are they able to draw additional funds now? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, um, you, you, it, it, it really depends on whether your funds were, dis, were, were dispersed or whether the lender has obtained a loan authorization to disperse it. So the, the rules require a lender, once they've obtained a loan authorization from the SBA, uh, based on your application, that they need to disperse those funds within 10 days. Um, they're not able to uh, rescind that um, at that point. Um, however, any point before that, um, you can request um, that the application be pulled and that you can reapply and, and the lender can apply the, the new um, gross income standard. Great. Um, question about startups. Um, if you're a, technically a startup and there's no payroll record, are you eligible for a PPP? Um, so businesses had to be in existence uh, prior to February 15th, um, 2020 to qualify for PPP. Um, uh, and, um, but regular pro uh, programs in the Office of Disaster Assistance can also be another program at, that the SBA uh, offers that you can find assistance from. I should also say that startup is also one of those uh, terms that's defined sometimes in the eye of the beholder. Um, so um, what, what we mean for purposes of PPP, some, for PPP, we don't think in terms of that uh, traditional startup definition. We think of in terms of were you in business prior, uh, you know, you know, on or before that date uh, that I mentioned, 2-15-2020. Uh, Great. Um, <laughs> I think there's a, a, a some disparities on understanding what the SBA is able to do and not do. Um, there's a few questions about applying for a loan through the SBA. Uh, do you mind talking more about if the SBA provides loans to people? Um, so right now, um, other than the disaster programs, um, um, the SBA does not provide direct uh, lending. Uh, we work through intermediaries, um, and those intermediaries range from uh, large uh, top 25 depository banks, um, federal credit unions, um, uh, uh, non-bank lenders like certified development financial institutions, minority deposit institutions, uh, financial technology lenders. Um, there's there's a, a broad network, um, over 5,000 different entities um, participated in PPP through the different phases to originate all the loans. So there's a pretty extensive network. Um, and, um, you know, I was checking before I got on the call, if you Google, uh, you know, how can I get a PPP loan, you will see ads and you will then see um, brands that are participating in this round meaningfully and that you can access. Great. Um, what is the guideline for payroll after the second PPP was funded? And I um, think trying to figure yeah. out more like, is it a 40 hour schedule work week right. uh, in configuring? Yeah, so there, there's no hard rule um, uh, on the hours for payroll. Um, only that in the end to get forgiveness, as I mentioned earlier, um, you must use 60% of the loan proceeds towards payroll. Um, and you have up to 24 weeks um, to use 60% um, of those proceeds towards payroll. So, um, uh, and that was an extension from, originally it was eight weeks and extended to 24 weeks with the idea that if you had more pay periods, you would eventually get to that 60% threshold. And as I mentioned um, earlier, a third of the 5.2 million um, units have applied for forgiveness and 99.1% of those have received full forgiveness. So, um, so um, there's flexibility and, and you have a pretty decent um, amount of time to demonstrate payroll proceeds. And of course, 40% can go to those other eligible purposes, utilities, rent, 
um, et cetera. Great. Um, there's a lot of questions about 2019 and qualification. So um, bear with me on this one. Um, can you explain comparing uh, revenue loss of quarter two 2019 to sort of the quarter two 2020 to qualify for the loan forgiveness? Yeah, so um, the borrower must have uh, have a drop in revenues from all sources of uh, at least 25% compared to the same quarter in the prior year um, is the easiest way to do it. I, I also um, Googled um, this particular issue, um, how do I document a 25% decline? Um, and you can do it by your corporation type. Um, so I mentioned the sites, uh, Treasury and SBA, but you can also Google, and there's a ton of um, how-tos um, that pop up instantly and are um, accurate. That's good that the Super Information Highway is providing some resources here. Love it. Um, someone was told that their application is in process through their bank. Um, is it automatically recalculated with the new guidelines um, if it's quote unquote in process? So it each intermediary institution um, works how they work. Um, some might um, do this automatically to benefit the customer. Um, but to be sure, you know, belts and suspenders, um, no, it's not, it's not guaranteed. It's not required that they recalculate it. So you need to probably make a proactive request that you're in your application that's in flight, um, um, that if you want to receive the benefit of the revised loan calculation, you should let your lender know that and, and resubmit your application. And to piggy off that, um, and, and looking at another question posed, if someone started the application process during the announcement of the new uh, rules, should they reapply as well? Um, yes. So if you if you want to receive the benefit of the revised loan loan calculation, you must do a new application. So you should notify your lending intermediary and and request that and 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 they will do that and just so folks are aware your th there was a number we we had a similar group called yesterday and um in in uh the questions were my lender hasn't heard of this change um so how do they find out well yesterday the the that, that they were actually telling you the truth that the, the rule hadn't been published until yesterday the forms hadn't been published they are now out they're widely disseminated. There's training going on today with lending intermediaries alongside these calls with you, the the the, the borrowers, and uh, uh, they should become, you know, it should get into the the mainstream consciousness by the weekend and be widely disseminated. So, um, if you call and and they're confused, which is fair because it is a recent change, and they're you know they're doing everything they can. Just stay patient and persistent. Um, they, they, but you you have the right to reapply under the new rules. Great. And I'm seeing, um, and we saw this yesterday too, about what are the rules for using the PPP. Um, there have been people who ask if they can use it to buy real estate, um, expand their business make it mobile business, buy more inventory. So what are yeah. the uses that are approved and what are not approved for PPP? Yeah, so this is a this is a great, great question. I'm 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 glad it was asked. Um so PPP is is by definition in an emergency program um that was created to address you know the pandemic and an emergency situation. So the purpose of the program is to make payroll and other um, um, basic expenses um, payable, so rent, utility. It's not designed as a growth tool. So to purchase uh, uh, you know, real estate, expand your business, um, it's designed to bridge a gap that's perceived to exist because of all of the um, health-related issues that have impacted your business's uh, gross income. And so 
it's an emergency loan. However, if you're on this call and you, um, you know, are not in need of a PPP loan, um, and by the way, great um, that we're all that, that we're happy. Or you feel like after your PPP loan, you will be back. You know, you feel like things are headed in the right direction, which is another great. Uh, vaccines are taking hold. States are opening up again. We're all getting our lives back. That would be awesome. Then um, there are great tools through the SBA loan programs that you can access through those lending intermediaries for business acquisition, owner-occupied real estate expansion, long-term permanent working capital, and the and the products um, are are um, uh, have these characteristics that are really important. There's a cap on the interest rate. There's no origination fees. There uh, there are no prepayment penalties. The amortization, uh, the uh, term of the note um, are longer than uh, a traditional conventional credit, which means that the debt service that you pay each month is lower. Um, the collateral rules, um, you can uh, receive a loan with no collateral. Um, and um, the credit box, the, the credit uh, eligibility is uh, more forgiving and more flexible. So for example, traditionally, when you apply for, for um, a loan, you want to see a credit score greater, you know, certainly greater than 700, maybe even as high, you know, 750 and higher. But traditionally with the SBA, you'll see um, flexibility around 650, perhaps even lower than 625. And so um, it's a totality of the circumstances. But the programs are designed because you cannot access credit elsewhere. Um, so um, uh, and they are a tool that lenders um, uh, like as well because the 75% gover government guarantee on those loans, there, there's, it's more complicated than that, but on uh, the 75% guarantee that's on those loans does two things for them. It protects them against their downside risk. So they're made whole up to 75% of the loss after a liquidation. Uh, but they also have a valuable asset that they can sell in the capital markets and receive fee income for. Um, and many of the regional and community banks um, use that tool for that purpose. So there is a lined self-interest um, with you, the borrower. Wow, that that's a great explanation of that. I think many people uh, have not heard that before. So thank you for that very detailed explanation. Um, want to go to uh formerly incarcerated uh there are changes to the ppp for uh ex-offenders or returning citizens what does what does that actually mean if you could just sort of elaborate on those changes yeah so first off i would say that this this um is uh, a movement um with bipartisan support um that is very exciting um i think uh, i think a lot of us think because um, we all understand that if you do something wrong, you suffer the consequences, but when you've paid your debt, you should be able to return and participate, you know, as anybody else. Um, so one of the things that um, uh, the, this, uh, the, the recent changes have done um, is said that unless you are currently under indictment, so you've, you've recently done something wrong, uh, potentially, you're, you're innocent until proven guilty, but yet you're under indictment, you're currently incarcerated or you're on parole or probation, um, or you've been convicted of a felony in the last five years. Um, if, if, it's, if you are not one of those things, but you have a misdemeanor conviction or you know, a prior arrest that you were not convicted for, um, a prior felony that you were convicted for beyond five years, um, but you've paid your debt to your society, you are now eligible for um, PPP. And I do want to add that um, when the inbound nominee uh, for the SBA, Isabel Guzman, she's not been confirmed yet, but when she worked in the Obama administration for Administrator Contreras Suite, uh, she and I worked on expand at, at this very problem um, by eliminating if you'd had a prior arrest and some other changes. So this is something we're going to continue to look at. We're going to continue to um, focus on expanding. Um, uh, for all the reasons that both Republicans and Democrats um, are focused on this issue. 
Thanks for that. And thank you for your work on that. That That's a huge issue uh, that we know many small business owners face, especially those that are, you know, sole proprietors. They create their own business because of the check the box and all those things. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for, for the work you did there. Uh, a couple more questions. Uh, the chat is just going crazy. It's a lot of questions. Uh, we want to say thank you so much to everyone for sharing um some of your stories what's happening to your business as well as the questions that you're trying to get answered and hopefully we're we're in a roundabout way giving you some general answers to your very specific questions i want to go more into sort of like the draws because i'm seeing a lot and i think there might be a little misunderstanding of uh how many times people can pull from from the ppp so patrick are you able to talk more about like the amount of time someone can actually um, ask for loans through the PPP. Yeah, so um, so twice uh, is the, the answer. So um, many um, in record numbers uh, last year uh, took a first draw, but many more still um, for a lot of reasons that we are trying to address. Um, were unable and so um, right now you you if you had a pre a prior if you took a draw in 2020 you're eligible with by if you can demonstrate a 20 percent decline in one quarter in 2020 versus the same quarter in 2019 25 percent or greater um, you're eligible for a second draw if you did not receive a ppp draw um, in 2020 you're eligible for a first draw um, when you receive that first draw um, if you use the proceeds within eight weeks, um, and I realize there's less than four weeks to go with the, the program, uh, but if you were to use those, so if there is an extension, for example, and Congress is contemplating that, and you use the first draw proceeds within eight weeks, you can apply for a second draw if they extend the present um, program as we understand it. So, so fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully. Congress is able to do that, uh, especially mm -hmm. since so many people like even today are, are learning more about their situation and how to apply. A um, yeah. couple of qu other quick questions. Um, do you need to provide documentation to show where you use the funds from the PPP? Uh, yes, so um, if you're, um, well, let me say, uh, uh, you need to not when you're applying for the for the loan origination so you 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 only need to document two and a half times payroll um and uh your gross wages or as we've talked about the new um change for sole proprietors self-employed individuals and um, independent contractors you'll demonstrate gross income um and again the calculations of these are i i look there's tons of they're very you know readily accessible on online um and and again you can go you can not if if you're worried you might get the wrong site or whatever you can go right to sba.gov or you can go to the treasury.gov um to do this uh but when you apply for forgiveness um you need in order to receive full forgiveness you need to demonstrate that you've used the proceeds that's consistent with 60 percent of those proceeds having gone to payroll the best uh documentation to show that is a payroll report um so if you if you use adp or paychecks or gusto or etc that's one example but that's not the only way to document payroll a lot of people are their own timekeeper so you can work with your lender intermediate they have lots of different ways for you to document that and then of course you can show um uh, copies of your utility bill uh, copies, you can have a copy of your lease agreement, et cetera, upload that in and, and, um, and PDF form, and, and that will satisfy the documentation on the non-payroll related things. Um, in, depending on your size of your loan, you may need to submit that to your lender um, or, or not. You may just need to retain those, and if the SBA or the Office of the Inspector General or somebody else wants to see those, they will inquire. Um, so if you're under 150,000, you typically don't need to submit documentation. Um, and typically, as a rule of thumb, over 150,000, you do. If you have a outstanding loan in excess of $2 million, uh, first off, well done as a small business owner, entrepreneur, you're you're balling. That's a that's a lot of payroll. 
So That's good, right. thank you. You employ a lot of people and we're thankful for it. Um, it, um, it. There is an additional documentation that you um, do with, with uh, in addition to those other things, um, to demonstrate that you, um, you had a need uh, for the payroll protection program uh, um, loan disbursement due to COVID. Um, and while it sounds extra, and it is extra, and it sounds maybe a little scary, it's truly not. You 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 were eligible to to get that. Um, I know we we tend to hate on the Lakers, but but uh, I'm from New England, so I'm all right with that. But 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 uh, it, it, truly, you you can apply for forgiveness. Awesome. And this is going to be the last question. Um, and, and I've seen a lot in the sole proprietors and payroll. Um, people have not taken salaries for their business. How or should they, if they're able to get a PPP, pay themselves? Will that count as a a a paying a salary or payroll? Yeah. So what it doesn't allow for. So S corps is a good example. So. Um, S corps typically take distributions. Distributions are not wages, um, and so if you can demonstrate that you uh, have paid yourself a reasonable wage, and by the way, your CPAs um, are all over this and and can help you as a resource partner document this. This is very similar. Uh, we don't we don't like to some of us don't like to talk about taxes because it's taxes, but uh, but just like taxes, your CPA um, can be quite useful in helping you um, substantiate um, your weight, your reasonable wage. Um, but if you cannot do that or you don't do that um, and you really truly are, truly are just taking distributions, then this program, unfortunately, is not for, for you. It's paycheck protection program. And so um, so that's the best answer I can give. And I also looked at this particular problem, just not to put everything on Google, but I, I wanted to see for myself if I Googled these specific questions and you know, you type it into Google with your question, there's some really great information about S Corps and distributions versus wages and documentation um, that that you'll find that will pop up. Wow. Well, thank you, Patrick. We want to say thank you. I know that was a lot of questions. I think we asked maybe almost 50 questions. Um, so hopefully uh, this is, provides some sort of uh, information to help so many amazing small business owners listening today. So thank you so much for, for taking the time out uh, and, and having some Q&A with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate everybody's time. Awesome. Uh, before you go, I wanted to know, are there additional resources that our small business owners can connect to um, to kind of troubleshoot some more of their issues that they're facing uh, or maybe address some of the questions that we didn't uh, uplift today? Yeah, so um, first off, as I mentioned, um, in every community across the country, there is a network of resource partners. Um, some that are direct employees for the for the Small Business Administration. So, for example, there's a, a district office, 68 of them. Um, so some states have multiple, some states have one. So um, you can check and see if, if one's um, available. But obviously, uh, during COVID, um, you know, people are now available to be ac accessible through Teams or Zoom or, you know, certainly by phone. Um, so you can find uh, a lender or relationship specialist um, at, at, at a district office. In addition, um, there are resource partners. Um, if you're a veteran-owned business, um, uh, as many um, folks are, uh, there are small business development um, centers uh, that are usually affiliated with uh, universities, community colleges, and so forth in the communities. And they are an extension of the SBA. They're, they they receive funds both from the federal and state level. Um, they are a, a unique resource partner because they typically understand not only your options for federal um, grant and loan programs, but also state and local, you know, municipal. Um, so that's another resource partner. Um, and um, and then I think, um, as I said. Um, there is a wide and active lending community that that is, you know, participating meaningfully, uh, you know, on an ongoing basis in PPP for sure. And 
there and 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 many of those uh, folks um, have and will be available for with SBA products. You know, once we put uh, PPP and COVID behind us. Awesome, thank you. Um, I know I saw some requests really quickly before we end. Uh, yes, we are going to post uh, this webinar, and you would definitely get an email uh, so you could see this recording. Um, and I know that they, we went through a lot of information. Patrick, you gave us a lot of a lot of tea for us to go through uh, as small business owners out here are trying to figure out uh, their next steps with the PPP. So again, we are going to post this webinar uh, and also email it out to all of you um, afterwards. Uh, so thank you. And then also too, that includes the slides that we're showing. You'll be able to see those in the in the recording as well. So just wanted to uplift that messaging so everyone's aware. So thank you for, for all of those in the comments uh, stating that. Um, wanted to uh, thank really quickly um, our stakeholders who engaged with us today uh, to make sure it happened and, and reaching out to small business owners um, across the country. So National Ace and Sheeling, thank you all so much. Native Women Lead, we appreciate you. Uh, the Main Street Alliance, thank you as well. LISC, we thank you so much. And Impact Hub Houston, uh, thank you. Um, now, as we are uh, coming to a close, we would love for you all to hear from the amazing Steph Poston. Uh, she is one of the amazing and just courageous uh, co-founders of Native Women Lead. So thank you, Steph, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks so much to the speakers and presenters. Lots of great information. Uh, more importantly, thank you to the attendees, the small business owners who will be essential in our recovery. Um, as was mentioned, I'm Steph Poston, the owner of Poston & Associates and co-founder of Native Women Lead, an organization that inspires Native women to start their own businesses as a pathway to closing the wealth gap. If eligible, please participate and utilize this great resource, America Needs Small Businesses. Stay strong, stay safe, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Steph. Uh, and again, thank you to all of you for tuning in today. Um, there are going to be several other uh, webinars that we are going to host. There are going to be a few more tomorrow where we're going to uh, hear and, and have convenings with Black small business owners, Hispanic small business owners. Uh, we also are doing some for rural sole, inter, uh, sole entrepreneurs, uh, for restauranters, for youth entrepreneurs, for LGBTQ. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, we will definitely send out additional information on those too so that you're able to pass on to your networks. And please feel free to join another one. Uh, we want this to be spread as wide as possible. Uh, and of course, the questions are gonna be a little different from each one. Um, so it'll be an opportunity uh, to hear from uh, Patrick and the team at the SBA again. Uh, so again, thank you so much. Thank you to the SBA. Uh, we wanna thank all of our speakers, Shi Ling, Tong, of the National ACE to Staff Poston of Native Women Lead, Pawe Rivera from the White House uh, to Rhett Buttle of PPSI, uh, and to all of you for taking some time out today to spend with us. Without further ado, I uh, wish you a good afternoon. <laughs>